So the proximity prompts allow you to have an interaction button that works in a certain proximity. So that means it's going to appear whenever you are going to be close to the object that it's parented to. And you can parent a proximity prompt to a base part attachment or a model with a primary part. Then you have these different properties that the documentation explains as well as different methods, events, and even more properties. So I'm going to explain them in Studio instead of just reading the whole documentation. So when we are in Studio, I can add a part and just move it somewhere like right there. Then it's going to be anchored, and then I need to add a proximity prompt instance to it. Like so. And now this part is going to have a proximity prompt whenever I get close to it. And it's going to appear like so. So right now it's saying E to interact, but if I change the keybind code to something like D, then leave an enter, it's going to change to D. But like I said, let's just quickly go over the properties. So the archivable property is an instance property that does well this. Then the action text, right now it's saying interact, but I can change it to something like, for example, hold me, and it's going to change like this. Then you have a clickable prompt, which means if I can press it with a mouse or not like this, if it's going to be off and then I need to show it again, I'm not going to be able to click on it again. Then you have the enabled. The exclusivity means how many prompts you're going to be able to see at once. One per button means that if this prompt is D and there was another prompt named A, you would be able to see both of them. But if there are two D prompts and one A prompt, you would only see one of the D prompts. And the always show will allow you to see all the prompts at once and one globally means that you're going to be able to see one prompt at a time. Then you have the gamepad button, hold duration that if I change to let's say 2 seconds and reset the prompt again, instead of it activating after a press, I'm going to have to hold the button like this. Then you have the max activation distance, which is the distance in which the prompt is going to activate. Then you just have the instance name. Then the object text, that is a text that appears below the action text right here. So I can give it a text of like a prompt. Oh, it appears above, not below, my bad. Then you have the parent of the prompt and a require line of sight. That means if, for example, there was a wall between me and the prompt, I wouldn't be able to see the prompt. But if it's going to be off, I'm going to be able to hold the prompt even if it's behind the wall. And then you have a style that I'm gonna leave for last and then just your usual UI offset. So if I move it by, let's say, a hundred, you can see it being offset from the center of the part. It's best visible if I do like 200 and then just spin my camera like this. Then the auto-localize, which automatically is going to translate the text on the prompt, and then a root localization table that I'm not really sure what it does. And these are the properties of a prompt and its basic functionality is like I said to just have an interaction button somewhere if you go close to an object like this. And there is different stuff with the scripts that you can do with the proximity prompts. I'm just going to do local prompt is equal to script parent, and then just move the script to the right. And this prompt has different stuff like triggered, changed, child added, Ancestry changed. These are the events from instances. Same with destroying, child removed, but you mostly want to focus on the triggered event. And maybe on the prompt button hold began and ended. Same with the trigger ended and prompt hidden and there was also prompt shown right here. So the trigger, as you would have guessed, this event is going to fire whenever the prompt hold duration or the click gets triggered. And I can just print out triggered and do a playtest just to demonstrate it. So I'm going to go to the prompt and then just hold into interact. And you can see that it's triggered right here. And same if I change the hold duration to like 4 seconds. And just try again. And here it's triggered. Then there is the trigger ended. Which is going to fire whenever the prompt gets triggered after the user releases the button. So I'm just going to print out trigger ended. So PC is going to print out triggered from this function right here. And now I'm going to release the button. And here it printed out trigger ended. And then the prompt shown and prompt hidden, same with the prompt button hold began and hold ended. All of these are self-explanatory. So just scripting the prompts is overall pretty simple. And let me also talk about the compatibility on different devices, where I could do a device test on like a tablet and just do play. 
And right now, since I am on a phone, this interact is going to be a touch input instead. And it's going to work like it was working on the PC. And it's going to be the same if I change it to an Xbox. Here it says, but I need to zoom it in a bit. Okay, I don't know why the prompt is really small on the Xbox, but it says that I need to hold X to interact. So here it is, basically. So you saw that the proximity prompt instance was working on basically every device. And let's move to the last thing that I wanted to show in the video, which is changing the prompt style. And how do you change the proximity prompt style? The first thing you need to do with the proximity prompt is change the style property to be custom. Then I can just remove the script because we don't need it anymore. And then I'm going to need a script instead of the starter player scripts. And this one will be named prompt style. And I need to go to the documentation right now, to the style tab. And to this proximity prompt style. This is where you're going to get the code sample, and I'm going to leave a link to this in the description. Where you are going to copy all of this script content with 516 lines. By just pressing on the copy to clipboard button right here in the corner of this box. Then you still are just going to paste it in in the local script. And let me just explain this really quickly. So when you scroll down to the bottom, you're going to have this onload function, right? And you have this proximity prompt service. And this service allows you to control the behavior of basically every prompt in the game. And you get it like any other service with the get service method. But every time a prompt throws, it's going to fire the prompt shown event, which is going to connect a function. And now it's not going to do anything if the style is set to default. But if it's not the default, it's going to get a screen GUI, which just creates a screen GUI in the player instance from right here. Then it's going to get a cleanup, which is a callback from this create prompt function. And this is the function that actually just creates the prompt and all of its styles. So you have the proximity prompt instance, the input type and the GUI. And the GUI is the screen GUI inside of the player, but then it basically just creates all of the twins, the prompt UI, the frame, the rounded corners, input, a resizable input frame. Then you have the action text instance, the object text, even more twins. But this should basically just give you an idea of how to make your own custom prompts. So I'm just going to demonstrate it really quickly how all of this logic works. So instead of the player instance right here, you have the player GUI. And the only thing you have right now is a free cam, but if I go close to this prompt, it's going to create this proximity prompt right here. And this is a screen GUI instance that later has a prompt, which is a billboard GUI that's shown right here. Then after that, it has the frame and the text button, which have all of these other different instances and yeah. This function is creating basically a lot of stuff because there is a lot of these instances that make up for the, let's say, holding animation right there from this circular progress bar. So I'm going to show a really cool thing later that you can do with this prompt. But right now, if you want to customize it, let's say you could take the main frame, which is right here, and just change its color to, for example, be red. So if I do a playtest and go close to this proximity prompt, right here, it's going to have a red background. And I could even change the font of the action text to be something like the Roboto. And right now it has a different font. And the thing I want to show is that you can even have a prompt on screen instead of it being a billboard GUI on a part. And you can do that by changing this prompt UI to be a screen GUI. And there are different properties that the screen GUI doesn't have and the billboard GUI has, like the always on top, where I need to just comment it out so it doesn't give any errors in the output, for example like right here. And I need to change this active to the enabled property, then just do a playtest to see if I get any errors, like right here. Then it's going to be dot size, so from this one, where I'm going to need to just comment it out. And then create a holder frame, because you can set a size of a screen GUI, and the holder frame is going to be what actually is going to hold the prompt UI, or rather the frame, the input, and yeah. I can just actually copy all of this and change it to the holder frame. 
then change the size to be like 0.2 by 0.12, then change this frame's parent to be the holder frame, same with this input frame right here. Then I'm going to do another plate as just to test it out. And I have the Adroni from the prompt UI. Which I can just comment out. Yeah, and this is something that I didn't really prepare and... Oh yeah, it's actually working right here. It's showing the prompt on my screen instead of the part. But yeah, I didn't really prepare this and... That was just a cool thing that I thought of. But let's actually just center this button out. And I need to do it through this holding frame, or the holder frame, by doing holder frame that position, and then it's going to be the UDIM2 because it's on screen with the grid, to be like 0.4 on the x-axis, so it's gonna be roughly in the center, and then I want it to be on the bottom, so it's going to be like 0.7 or maybe 0.8. So this is going to be another playtest. And let's see. So right now the prompt is going to show on the bottom right here. And I'm going to close the script for now to show you that the prompt is also going to scale with the screen size. So that's a really neat thing that you can do. And one more thing because I am able to also click the prompt with my mouse like this. Something like this is going to be really annoying for the mobile players. So to disable it you can go to the prompt and turn off the clickable prompt property right here. Then if I reset it, I'm not going to be able to click it anymore. So yeah, that's how you can make a prompt show up on your screen instead of the part. And it's going to be inside of the player GUI right here. And I also didn't parent the button, but you basically just get the idea, right? But it's also possible for you to make a custom one, like a already pre-made preset, that you could later... where was the script? Right here. That you could later have these triggered options or these triggered connections connected to the prompt to do different stuff like the visualizer bar and stuff. And overall I think that this script is kind of just overdone and overcomplicated because this create prompt function doesn't really explain you how you can do stuff and it's kind of just unreadable. So I just hope that I was able to explain everything for you guys. But yeah, that is basically going to be everything for today. So if you found this tutorial informative then please leave a like and also subscribe to the channel. You can also become a channel member if you want to support me. So thank you guys for watching and see ya.